tonight on MTN. What now in Montana's Eastern Congressional District? With such a large primary, the winner may only need a third of the vote. The key is where do you get that vote? We ask each candidate if they're still planning to run with Matt Rosendale dropping out of the Senate race and examine who might have a leg up. Plus, the latest on funeral arrangements for a Sheridan, Wyoming cop after Tuesday's tragic shooting. And behind me are the locked gates to the Stevens Creek Bison Quarantine Facility. I'm John Shearer in Yellowstone, and coming up, I'll explain what it takes to send a Yellowstone bison out of the park. The 430 News starts right now. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Friday. I'm Casey Conlon. Shockwaves continue to reverberate around the Montana political world today after Representative Matt Rosendale bowed out of the race for John Tester's seat in the U.S. Senate less than a week after filing to run. The big question now is what will happen to Rosendale's current position? At least nine Republicans have filed or announced their intention to file in Montana's Eastern Congressional District, not including Rosendale, who has not indicated whether yesterday's announcement means he'll seek re-election to the House. We reached out to all nine today and all said they either were definitely still going to run or were still considering it. So Rosendale's news hasn't seemed to change what is looking like a very large race. After the filing deadline in a few weeks, uh, then we'll see what's going to shake out. And then, even then, things aren't going to ramp up until, you know, late spring into summer. So, you know, uh, March and April is kind of, you know, a slow season until we really ramp up to the, the primary. The most high-profile primary candidate, former six-term Montana Representative Denny Reberg, said he's still considering what to do after Rosendale's news. Candidates have until March 11th to officially submit filing paperwork. Funeral arrangements have been announced for the Sheridan police officer who was shot and killed in the line of duty Tuesday. A celebration of life with military honors will be held for Sergeant Nevada Crinky on March 1st at 1 p.m. at the Sheridan College Dome, according to an obituary published by Kane Funeral Home. The service will be followed by a processional to the Sheridan Municipal Cemetery. Crinky died Tuesday morning when he was shot while serving a man a trespass warning at a residence near downtown Sheridan. The shooting resulted in a 30-hour standoff with the man, later identified as 46-year-old William Lowry. Lowry was killed by police when he fled that residence carrying a firearm. Crinky is survived by his wife, a corporal with the Sheridan Police Department, and their young daughter. The first charges have been handed down to two teenagers in custody in connection with the deadly shooting at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade Wednesday. Missouri court documents filed yesterday say the teens face gun-related and resisting arrest charges for now, though the officer of juvenile detention said additional charges are expected. The shooting, which came at an event attended by almost a million people, injured dozens and claimed the life of Lisa Lopez Galvin, a popular Kansas City radio DJ. The Gun Violence Archive says it's the 48th mass shooting in the United States already in 2024, prompting many to wonder if any events are safe. There seems to be no place that mass shootings leave untouched. Schools, churches, grocery stores, nightclubs, theaters. Is any place safe? Well, gun violence prevention advocates say no, but there is hope they can be. In Kansas City, it was a parade, a celebration that ended in chaos. All of a sudden, the girl next to me, where my daughter was standing with her husband, was shot in the mouth. Crowds replaced by cops running past piles of red and gold confetti. The people who came to this celebration should expect a safe environment. Earlier this week, it was a shooting on a New York subway. Before that, Boom, 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 boom. And I yell, Mom! Gunfire Sunday at the Houston megachurch of Pastor Joel Osteen. We've been here 65 years and have somebody shooting in your church. But, you know, we don't understand why these things happen. Places that used to be safe. A high school in Parkland, Florida. A music festival in Las Vegas. A movie theater in Aurora, Colorado. When you have 500 million guns in the hands of civilians, none of us are safe anywhere. Shannon Watts founded gun violence prevention group Moms Demand Action. We know exactly why America has a 26 times higher gun homicide rate than any pure nation, and it is easy access to guns, full stop. On what was supposed to be a joyous day, Kansas City fans are facing another gun tragedy, once again changing life in America for the worse. 
I'm never bringing my kids to another place like this again. I don't, it, they ruined it for us because it's the second time we've came to something big event like this and there was a shooting. Watts believes there is hope in legislation like the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act and stronger gun laws at the state level. The country, she says, may finally be reaching a tipping point. This carnage stops when we all demand stronger gun laws, when we all follow the data. We don't have to live like this. We don't have to die like this. Clayton Sandell, Scripps News, Denver. Not long ago, most had no idea what swatting was, but the bogus threats have become an all too familiar occurrence across Montana, especially at schools. Now, as Scripps' Stephanie Liebergen explains, those swatting calls are targeting politicians. Picture this, one minute you're on your couch watching TV and the next, your home is surrounded by a SWAT team. The FBI first warned about swatting in 2008, and back then, the department said the schemes can be pretty sophisticated. Cyber crimes expert Kevin Hendricks says that's not the case today. A lot of these swatters are not very sophisticated. They're, all, they're pretty much Googling a name, trying to find an address for that name, and then Googling where, what police department oversees where that person lives, and then calling that police department. Some states, like California and Virginia, have passed laws to increase the penalty for swatting. Senator Rick Scott is one member of Congress pushing for a new law on the federal level, in part because he was a victim of a swatting call in December. The bill would impose strict penalties for these fake emergencies, with the suspect facing up to 20 years in prison if someone is seriously hurt and facing life in prison if someone is killed. Other swatting victims include Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, Boston Mayor Michelle Wu, Special Counsel Jack Smith, and even presidential candidate Nikki Haley. Well, she was gone when the swatting call happened, but her parents were home at the time. The last thing you want is to see multiple law enforcement officials with guns drawn pointing at my parents. It is an awful situation. It put the law enforcement officers in danger. It put um, my family in danger. But even if no one is hurt or killed, the impact of swatting is very real. These aren't nuisances. These aren't, you know, this isn't kids playing around the telephone. This is, these are crimes and, you know, people are being targeted and it, it's a waste of resources at a minimum. The FBI started a database in May 2023 to track swatting calls around the country. And over 550 incidents have been reported in the past nine months. Well, the trough, a low pressure that brought us nice amounts of snow around Montana. Wyoming is now on its way out, leaving us with a lot more clear sky. But we also have some other changes going forward. Gustier wind is moving our direction despite our clearing sky. So overnight tonight, we're going to have some cold wind chills and the potential for some blowing and drifting snow. Another winter weather advisory just because of that on Saturday. We also have a warming trend coming, offering a complete seven-day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Last week, Yellowstone National Park sent 116 bison to the Fort Peck Reservation in northeast Montana. MTN's John Shearer explains why it takes so long for bison captured in the park to be sent to Indian tribes. You know, you can just imagine these animals that are were born in the wildness of Yellowstone, then moved into a, a, a corral for the last, in this case, last 300 days. Now they've just been on a truck for 500 miles. The bison were sent to Fort Peck last week, but the park stayed quiet about the transfer until now because of past threats and protests when bison were moved. To date, we've brought 414 animals to Fort Peck since 2019. Roughly 300 of those animals have now been moved to 26 other tribes from as far away as Alaska to um, Michigan. These gates behind me are locked. They're normally closed to the public because this is the bison quarantine facility for Yellowstone National Park. It's where the animals are held for one to three years. Females will need to be in the program for that length of time, but then also breed and calve and raise that calf to six months of age. Jeremiah estimates the northern bison herd at 4,500 right now and probably 5,500 by next summer. 
That's about at the 10-year average. Last summer, the park greatly expanded its bison quarantine facility. There's a really good chance that in two winters from now, we will be moving over 300 animals from here to the Assiniboine and Sioux. These are the last animals that were the members of the last wild herd on this planet. So being able to bring those animals back to tribal areas means a, means a ton to the people who live there. In Yellowstone National Park, John Shearer, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 430 News, your child has a routine checkup. Do you have to take a day off of work? Do you pull your child out of school? We look at a solution to those issues and more. And later, the story behind this photo from yesterday afternoon featuring a Montana basketball legend and the new women's college scoring queen. Coming up.